I'm replacing my radiator. I have a 2007 Dodge Grand Caravan. And uh, I've been noticing when I run the car to uh, operating temperature, this over here gets moist. So there's a, there's a leak in there somewhere that's causing the hot coolant to spray out. Um, and I've, I, I used um, a radiator sealant. In here, it's it's a goop that kind of goes flows through the system and plugs holes. That did not do anything, so I'm going to just re go ahead and replace the radiator. The quick setup on this is um, there is uh, there's a couple covers over here. There's a, uh, a, f a front uh, bumper cover. We're going to remove that. This metal thing is a radiator uh, mounting bracket or cover. We're going to remove that and get access to the radiator. Uh, the radiator is, it's a, there's a sandwich in there. There is, uh, and I'll get down, you can't really see the, uh, the sandwich, but there's these two fans um, suck air in from the front of the car. Um, and, it, and the air gets sucked in through two things. There's a, an air conditioning condenser at the front. It's like a big, big plate that, that um, helps uh, with the refrigerant uh, as it flows through the AC system. We're not worried about that. We're worried about the radiator, which sits in the back. And... Uh, and that, and, and the, the fans suck air through to, to cool down the hot refrigerant that's flowing, or sorry, the hot coolant that's flowing through the AC system. So we'll take those two fans out. They're connected via electrical connectors. Take them out. Um, then we'll, we'll separate the radiator from the AC condenser. There's a couple fasteners in there. Um, and then we'll lift the radiator out and replace it. So that's, that is a real <laughs> top level discussion it's, it's more there's more bolts and things like that in there but that's basically the deal um, we'll have removed the coolant before this so after we re reinstall the radiator we'll refill the coolant I'm not going to go through those steps that's a separate video separate discussion but uh, um, this should this job should take probably an hour hour and a half if you have the right tools and you know what you're doing uh, before you start a little safety so I've got the car jacked up uh, that's for the purpose of draining the, the, the radiator I've got a jack stand down there. Um, I've got a bucket with a 3 8 hose you can just see through there. I've attached a little 3 8 uh, tube hose um, onto the radiator. There's a, uh, there's a little um, coolant exit down there. Um, and, and I'm going to fill it up. Um, I've got the, I will, I haven't done it yet, but uh, release the, uh, the, the positive um, uh, cable. I guess we've been negative actually from the... Uh, uh, from the, the, the battery, um, put the, the parking brake on so the car doesn't move at all, and uh, wear, I'd wear gloves, I'd wear air uh, eyewear because we're messing with coolant, and I'll get to work. I've started the coolant. Um, this is really easy. There's a, you can see down there, that's a red stopcock. You just twist that. That'll uh, release the fluent into the bucket. You can hear it pouring out. You also want to release the, uh, the drain fill cap. Um, I just replaced the radiator fluid, uh, the coolant, a week ago, so I'm going to reuse uh, mine if, you know, this is a good time to flush your system, actually, if you want to do that separately. You need to remove this. This is the front uh, bumper cover. Uh, there are some Phillips head screws in the here. There's a 10 millimeter um, uh, bolt. Uh, through in in here. I've, I've taken this out and then there's a plastic pin that goes in here connects those two So you just use a screwdriver or something just to pop that that pin out Then you just have to move the cover around a little bit and it will will pop out. You can just tuck that away And you can start to see the system in here. So this is the AC condenser behind it is the radiator There's the, the two cooling fans in the back this is the radiator support bracket. There are four 13 mil uh, bolts. Just undo those, two, two on each side. And then this um, does not lift away clean. It lifts away clean, but there's a, there's a hose attached to it. So just, um, you know, you don't need to dismantle the hose. Just, just tuck this away up on the top of the engine. Brackets removed, then uh, remove the hose. This is the, uh, the overflow uh, res uh, reservoir uh, hose. Just, just pull that out and just tuck it aside. Then uh, remove the two electrical connectors from the fans. There's one on each side. Little point on these electrical connectors on, on Chrysler's, at least my Chrysler, every electrical connector is red. And you can see that that uh, on the left, that's the part that protrudes through and locks in the, the clip. There's the, the clip you pull out. So you can get a screwdriver in there and just pull it that way. And uh, so you can't see that edge of the red. Then there's another clip on the end right there. You push that, then the whole uh, connector will come right off. 
Then uncouple the two radiator hoses. Uh, there's an, uh, uh, one there. You just use a just use a wrench and unclamp the clamp. There's one here and there's one on the bottom passenger side. You can kind of see it through there. All right, so you have to get under the car, or if you can get it from the top, great. One small aside from the radiator repair. I have to replace this. That's the air conditioning compressor down there. I need to replace that as well because it's leaking. So I've just conveniently found that I have great access to the AC uh, bolts. So I'm going to do the AC condenser swap right now and do a separate video on that. So if you're watching this video, um, if, you, if you need to do any AC work, like remove a compressor, now's the time to do it. I got the radiator out. The old, there's the old one on the bottom. And there's the new one on the top. A couple things to point out. Um, when you uh, release the radiator hoses, there's the top one, and then there's the, the bottom left one. When I did the bottom left, I had the car jacked up, and there was still a lot of coolant um, trapped down there. So when I removed that hose, um, you know, maybe a, a cup of uh, coolant came out. My, my point there is, just never be underneath those hoses because the coolant is, is deadly. It will, you know, it'll damage your eyes, etc. So just be real super careful with that. Um, and then to get this hose or to radiator out, um, there's there are two clips on the front. Let me just zoom in. There are clips here, and on the other side there's another one. And what you need to do is pinch these, and then you know, pull the radiator back or pull the AC uh, condenser forward and re release the two. And then on the bottom, um, well, let me look at the other one. These are, uh, this is like a little mounting bracket. The AC condenser slides down into this and uh, there's no clip or anything. It's just, it's just, a, it's just a, a bracket to hold it in place. When I tried to pull the radiator out of the car, um, the right hand side came right out, no problem. This side was hard, and it was because of that clip. It seemed like the width of the the hose exit and the clip was too wide to get through the gap of this this metal uh, looks like a stainless steel um, uh, AC AC uh, pipe. I couldn't get it up, and I could. I probably could have spent, you know, another couple of minutes just maneuvering the uh, the radiator out. What I wound up doing was taking a little saw, and I just cut the clip off this radiator because I'm throwing this out because you know it's broken, and then it, it, the radiator popped right out. Right there's the new radiator, and some things I'll point out. There are some rubber flaps on the left. You need to pull that off. And put it onto the put it on the new one, um, and I guess that's that's really all you know. Got to point out the new one has the rubber mounting uh, bracket on the bottom, so you don't need to move those over. Um, there's a note in the radio the replacement radiator about um, you might might need to remove the metal uh, bracket on the top, and it looks like I need to do that. So there's no bracket across the top of my old one. But there is one on my new one, so I'll, it said to just remove those four bolts and take it off, so I'll do that. And I'm now going to go install this radiator. So, um, what, on my car, what I, the radiator I bought does not have the, the two fans, so there are two bolts, one on each side. Uh, just undo those, they're 10 millimeter. And then there's, a, there's kind of a clamp or a pin on the bottom, just turn it upside down and release that. And then the, the fan assembly just just comes comes right off right and then just mount the fan assembly back onto the new radiator as you as you got it i've got the radiator uh all back in i've got the electricals reconnected on both sides i've got the uh the new the the old fan mounted onto the new radiator uh, that's the condenser the ac condenser what i'll do is lift that up and slot it back into the the mounting bracket there on the on the bottom right, so that little little black thing right there, and uh, then we're getting close to the end. Job's all done. I got the radiator back in. That went in very very easily. Um, and uh, what I would do if you're doing this, I would take some photos uh, before and after, and just keep track of all the little 
bits and pieces, there'll be bolts, there'll be screws. Um, I, uh, one thing that I, I messed up was underneath this, there's a, uh, there was a, a rubber flap that separated the AC condenser from the, uh, from the radiator. I neglected to put that on, so I had to kind of work backwards a little bit. Um, other than that, it, it was just easy as, 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 as heck. So I filled up the, uh, the radiator, uh, ran it, got the air out. Um, I had one little thing I, I, I thought would work was I, I like the stopcock valve on my existing, my, my previous existing radiator. So I put that into the new one and it didn't work. It didn't hold a, uh, didn't hold a seal. So I had to, um, replace all, I had to flush my whole system, um, replace the stopcock valve and then, and then fill the coolant back up. But uh, otherwise it worked great. Um, so good luck.